Nope. Leave. He loves climbing on tables. This is very weird. Hey, hey Pavlovs! Pavlov. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be sharing our must-have products for your puppy. Puppy update slash pup date. <laughs> Maslo is 19 weeks old today and he's been progressing really well. Oh my god, except for, don't eat your brother. Nope. He loves climbing on tables. This is very weird. So Maslo is doing well. Um, he's potty trained. He gets along well with his brother. Oh my god. <laughs> he said no pap dad in this suit. We want to do a quick video about some things you might need for your puppy. So this is our second time having a puppy, Pavlov being the first and Maslow being the second. And we've learned a lot throughout this process. Um, some things that work with Pav haven't worked with Maslow and vice versa. And so this video is a culmination of our experiences of both dogs. These are the top five things that I feel like are crucial for raising your puppy and these are things that work for both dogs. So most people get their puppy about at eight weeks but between eight weeks and like 20 weeks, these are the crucial times to expose your puppy to new things. If there's anything that you have at home when you take home your pup, please make sure that it's the crate. Um, the crate is a really first step to making sure that they have a sense of security and a little home so that within your home they can kind of develop their own safe space. It's really important that they have a place in your home that they can run to and feel protected. On the topic of flexibility, we actually have two different crates for Maslow. We have one metal crate that we have in our living room, and then we have a fabric crate that we put in our car, um, which we use to transport Maslow back and forth. We wanted to make sure that he had exposure to multiple crates because the fabric one is actually a little bit more portable, so that when we move to different places or travel to different hotels or back home with our family, um, we don't have to bring the big crate with us. Um, because Maslow has had exposure to the little crate, he feels more comfortable. It's really important that they get used to this um, and have a space of their own. Crate training is hard, but watch our video. We have some awesome tips in there, and we'll link that again right below. Number two is the Blissle Spot Cleaner. Let me tell you. Okay, I watched a TikTok video about this thing <laughs> and I bought it at like midnight because I was scrolling in bed and it's honestly been such a life changer. When you get a puppy, it's going to pee, it's going to poop. It's what puppies do. They're like babies in animal form. And so um, whether you have carpet or hardwood, I mean if you're lucky you have hardwood or tile, but if you have carpet or any other type of thing that the dog can pee on, the, it's a great tool in order to get it out and make sure that it doesn't leave any lingering scents or stains in, in, um, on your carpet. Yes, like Anthony was saying, puppies are going to have accidents. That's a given. They're going to throw up, they're going to pee, they're going to poo, they're going to eat something weird and then accidentally diarrhea even though you just took them out like 10 minutes ago. So that's going to happen. Accidents are bound to happen and this thing is not sponsored by the way. It's like it's really just freaking awesome. Like I love it so much. And so you might not think you need it, but you definitely need it if you have a puppy. We put it in and then it has like this like brush and then you brush along it and you spray water and then it cleans out the stain. Mm. The thing is you gotta move do it like immediately for the best results. So if you notice your dog peed or pooed somewhere, like clean it up quickly, plug that in. But it's super cute, convenient, small, and actually pretty cheap. It's only like a hundred bucks. Yeah. For a cleaning supply? I think it's worth having a clean and good smelling house. Number three. We really recommend that you get some good shoes. We also did a video on this too of our favorite shoes for puppies. So here we have a trachea, a bully stick, and some Himalayan dog shoe. And these are really important to have. Why? Puppies are going to bite stuff. They're gonna pee everywhere and they're gonna bite everything and that's just what puppies do. Because they're teething and just, it's a really unpleasant experience for them to lose their teeth. And so, they're gonna to wanna to chew on your shoes, on your laptop chargers, on your furniture, um, on literally everything that you leave out. You wanna make sure that you give them a replacement behavior. Um, something else to chew on so that it lets them know that it's okay if you chew but only on appropriate things. 
yeah, chewing is a very natural tendency for puppies because they're teething and they're in pain. So giving them something tasty and long lasting will really do the trick. Our favorites are the ones that I already pointed out here. So the bully stick, trachea, and Himalayan dog chew. They're all natural and pretty long lasting. It keeps Mazel really busy. I mean, he's not a crazy chewer like Pav. That's a crazy chewer, but he's an adult. But for the puppy, you know, like this bully stick will last him a few days, which is awesome. Pro tip, give them one of these or just any of these chews while they're in their crate to strengthen the association. Number four. Four is leashes. Leashes are super crucial, and especially for Maslow. So we've never had a fluffy dog before, but apparently after browsing the Quezon pages on Facebook, um, I learned that they need a special type of leash since their fur oftentimes gets matted and it's from White Pine Outfitters. You wanna put it on him? Sure. Yeah. So it just goes around his neck and then it tugs if he tugs back. So it's a good, good little collar and he should grow into it actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the topic of having um, a diverse range of items for your dog to get used to, um, we have several different leashes. And part of that was trial and error um, because we bought several to make and, and learn which ones were more or less appropriate for Maslow. Um, but also it's important to make sure that they, they feel comfortable being on all types of different leads. Um, you wanna make sure that you have something that can get them by the neck, but then also teaching them how to be comfortable in a harness can be, is really important because there are some situations in which maybe a harness is more appropriate for the body. Yes, especially for big tuggers. You know, you don't really know if your puppy is going to be a big tugger to begin with, and this might help um, to inhibit that. Some people use the Easy Walk, and that's um, like a pulling inhibition collar. So it's good to have just different types to test out for your puppy to see which one works best for your lifestyle. He's all crunching. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, but we be, we mostly use this one from White Pine. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. It's good for matted dogs. So if you have a very fluffy doggo and you don't want his fur to get matted or creased, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Also, the harness is from Eat Play Wag. Um, we think that they're really cute and um, functional. Pull them from the front, and then there's also um, the one on the top, so you can pull them from the top. And then one other leash that we have, sorry, I'm like talking a lot about it. Uh, one other leash that we have is this really long jumbo boy. And um, this is a good one. It's, I don't know how, how long is it, 10 feet? -ish? Yeah, it's like definitely longer than six. Yeah, this would wrap around me like 10 times. Yeah, um, it's a hands-free leash too. Yeah. So you can like wrap it around your waist. Um, you know, you can be hands off, mm -hmm. which is good. So it's really nice for hiking. We love going hiking with our dogs. So it's a nice leash to have. And it's also good for puppies so they can explore. <laughs> I bit the crap out of it. Ooh, that's... That's a thick one. Oh, oh that will just bit Yanni. I don't know what you want. You want okay. Yeah, I should just clean it. put it down. Yeah, I'm gonna Number five is to have a variety of different bowls, toys, and treats. And for bowls, I want to talk about the importance of bowls. I've met dogs where they'll only eat out of one special bowl. Why? Because other bowls weren't generalized to them as they were growing up. They were used to eating out of this one bowl their entire life, and when their food was put in a different bowl, they're like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. And, some, and some people don't realize that challenge until it's too late. Um, until you have to board them or have your parents watch them or your friend watch them and or until that one time you forget to bring it when you travel and the dog doesn't eat. <laughs> so you want to make sure that really early on you expose them so that they're flexible. Yeah, so we have like this traveling water bowl that we bring everywhere and they used to drinking out of this, but we also have like several other traveling water bowls that they can use, so like just like the normal plastic bowls and getting them acquainted to that. But we also have different like food bowls at home that they use, um, but just getting them used to eating and feeding out of different items and not just one general item. The slow feeder, this is really good for puppies too, especially Maslow who eats like a monster <laughs> when I want him to slow down because he has gotten hiccups from eating so fast. Um, you know, this is a great way because they have to go through the crevices, eat very slow, put their tongue inside, and anyway, just a good option and something that they can generalize as well. This is a great option if your dog eats so fast that they throw up. 
Oh, yeah. It totally happens. Um, and then we also have this standard porcelain bowl that we put Pavlov and Maslow's food in. Um, this is the standard, but we do make sure to switch it up every couple days just so that they can get more flexible. Um, we've been teaching Maslow how to drink from like a human cup because sometimes we go to the coffee shop or on a walk and we have to um, just have random water. Um, and he's done a good job adjusting to that. On the topic of diversity, it's important to have many different types of toys. Um, your dog is going to have a different relationship with playing with toys. Pavlov loves ball, Pavlov loves all types of fetch and tug, um, but we exposed him to that really early on. Um, and when Maslow came into the house, we were so used to playing with toys with Pavlov, I think Maslow really picked it up and has also come to like different toys. So make sure, you know, if you just have a toy and just leave it there and never really engage with it, um, your dog is probably not going to be very interested in it. Um, luckily, we have a dog that's very interested in toys, so he makes toys look like the best thing in this world. Um, and we also make toys look like the best thing in this world by going like, shaking it and playing with it in the air and making it look very interesting. Um, and again, toys are really important just because they keep your dog entertained, they can help with teething. Um, instead of ripping up your furniture, they can rip up a toy instead, which is definitely less costly um, than a new couch. <laughs> Overall, toys keep your dog entertained, but also work on developing their brain. Um, you know, they have a lot of puzzle toys, we have a lot of rope toys where they can play tug together. Um, and overall, it's just like, it helps with boredom. Bored puppies are probably the worst puppies. One of my favorite analogies that I've heard regarding toys is that what you touch turns to gold. And that if you touch toys, if you touch different shoes throughout your house, it lets your dog know that it's important to you, which means it's important to them. And what we're doing really early on is forming these associations so that for the rest of their life, so that when they get older, they've learned how to live a flexible lifestyle that's adapted to the way that you live. Lastly, we always think it's a good idea to carry around easy to break treats. Ooh, that's, I, oh, I think that's the most important part is that it's easy to break. Yeah. Um, treats are big, or they come in a variety of sizes. Um, you don't always want to give your entire dog a big treat whenever they learn to sit or are learning to do any type of behavior. So it's good to have something that breaks so that you can just give them a tiny piece. <laughs> um, you're only learning, they're learning associations, not necessarily trying to get full off of this experience. Yes. Um, and you want to keep them motivated, right? So you don't want to give them big chunks of treats and then so much that they're full and don't want to work anymore. You know, we're constantly training Maslow all the time because he has so much to learn. How to walk, how to sit, how to wait, um, how to interact with the outside world. Stone Chews is our favorite treat because they're dry, really easy to break. I can break them like into tiny little pieces like this. They're raw and they taste really good, like the dogs love them because it's real meat. And I like that when you break them, your fingers don't feel disgusting. Oh. There are like some treats that are just like really meaty and jerky like that when the dogs grab it from my hand and it's wet and I touch the treat again, it like turns into this weird mush. Mm. Um, these ones are also okay if you like forget them in your pocket and you do laundry. Like it doesn't make your stuff disgusting. There's some that have like stained oh, my pockets. Like it's really gross. Anyway. These are really awesome because they're like limited ingredient treats, they're really great, and the dogs love them, easy to break, and we highly recommend using them as a high incentive treat for your puppy. Luckily, Stone Chewies has many different protein choices, so they have beef, lamb, chicken that Anthony talked about, but they also have um, freeze-dried treats as well. So getting your dog exposed to many different types of treats is a great idea. This is just happens to be one of our favorites. The ultimate goal is flexibility and having an adaptable dog. Um, and so you don't want your dog to be too dependent on one situation or one product or one experience in order for them to feel comfortable. Yeah, so those are the five main things we would recommend to new puppy owners um, that are at the top of our list for sure. With this being said, we are not the puppy experts. You are, because you have a puppy or have had a puppy before. And so if you have any other tips that you think the community can learn from, please leave them in the comments below because we want to make sure that everyone feels the most comfortable and prepared for their puppy. Yeah, last little bit. We appreciate you guys and love you. Hope you're staying safe and wearing your mask. We love you all and um, hope that you learn something from this experience. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Yeah, stay safe. We love you guys and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.